Hey everyone, Miss Trillo here. Today I am going to teach you how to make your own DIY face mask. You need some fabric, of course. I like to use two different colors. Um, I usually go with a pattern on one side and a solid on the other. This mask is reversible, so both colors can be fun. They can coordinate, or it could just be, you know, solid on both sides, whatever you want. You're gonna end up needing a seven by nine inch rectangle of both pieces of fabric. Um, so less than a yard of each, which is great. What I actually do is create a little template. I want my students to be able to make this mask in class. So I just made a poster board template. A lot of people end up making multiple masks. So I would encourage you to do this. It also helps you have a straight edge to follow when you cut your fabric, but seven inches by nine inches is the size that you're gonna need. You're also gonna need some elastic. I just bought some uh, elastic on Amazon, which was uh, marketed as actually being mask elastic because it's super soft. So I like this one, but you can get other kinds as well. I like using a rotary cutter to cut my fabric on a cutting mat. And you're gonna need an iron, an ironing board, and of course a sewing machine, as well as thread and a coordinating color with your fabric. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so step one is to cut out your fabric. Have a cutting mat, your fabric, your template, and a rotary cutter. So what I like to do is find the straightest pre-made edge of the fabric and work from that. It kind of guarantees a square cut. Square just meaning all sides are kind of lining up and straight. So I find the straightest edge over here, put my template down on it, and then make sure it lines up there. Make sure my fabric isn't um, folded underneath. You even could uh, iron your fabric before you get started so that you can guarantee a good, even, straight cut. Um, but then you get your rotary cutter. Make sure to never put your hand in front of the rotary cutter. And then cut out your fabric. I think a lot of people end up wanting to make multiple masks so I think having a template is super handy because then you don't have to measure your fabric every single time that you cut. And it honestly is not the end of the world if it's a little bit wider. You will be um, creating, oops, you will be creating a seam allowance um, which will help hide any imperfections from your cuts. If you don't have a rotary cutter, it's not the end of the world. You could just use scissors. But there is my first seven by nine piece of fabric. Now I'll just do that with the other one and then we'll move forward. All right, the next step is to sew your two pieces of fabric together. You wanna make sure that you put the right side of the fabric down on your other piece. So you want both of the right sides facing each other. The right side simply means like that prettier side and you want the kind of like the back side of the fabric facing up. If these were two pattern sides, then I would want the wrong side facing here, wrong side facing here, because later we'll end up flipping this inside out. So I'm just gonna use a straight stitch. We're only sewing down the long side right now, both of the long sides, and we'll leave the short side open for a minute. So I'm just using a straight stitch on my sewing machine. This is a brother sewing machine. If you need a video on how to use a machine like this, I have YouTube videos for that too. So here we go. You wanna make sure to back stitch at the beginning and end, and then come all the way down. Back stitch at the end as well. I use about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you look real close, you can see that there's just a little bit of fabric. That's called the seam allowance. So I did my stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, and I made sure to keep it straight by using the edge of the fabric, lining it up against the presser foot to keep a nice um, kind of straight line. Next, I'm gonna do the same exact thing on this side right here. So now we have our two long sides sewn together with a simple stitch. What we're gonna do now is turn this right side out. So that's why it matters that you have the pretty side of the fabric on the inner part when you sew it. Because when you turn it right side out, 
You see now our seam is hidden and we've got this pretty side of the fabric showing. You need your iron nice and hot already, so um, make sure you've had that plugged in maybe while you were sewing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the iron to press down this seam um, just to make it nice and crisp. I like to also use steam when I iron. It's gonna be very important that your iron is super hot and the um, fabric you're using is cotton so you get this nice crisp. I, mean, I don't know if you can see like how flat that is, but it's amazing. So see the difference between it being ironed here and it if we had just left it non-ironed. Um, so we're gonna do that on both sides. Okay, so just ironing it flat. What we're gonna do now, so this open side, this is eventually where the elastic's gonna be put in, um, but we wanna make sure it's nice and pretty. So we're gonna kinda tuck the fabric into itself about a quarter of an inch, and then we're gonna press it down. So see how I just kinda tuck it in, try to be as even as possible can be difficult. Let's try that again. All right, so now we're just gonna iron that down. If you got a few flyaway threads, you can snip those off later. So much um, of sewing and getting clean looking lines comes from using the iron. Um, like, you know, I didn't have to sew that down, but it stays down. It's awesome. All right, we're going to do the other side too. So again, I kind of use my fingers at the edges to just roll it into itself. Make sure it's even. And then I kind of lay it flat. And then press it. What's great about this way of making masks is we're not going to use any sewing pins. We're making our iron do all the work so you don't have to mess with those pesky sewing pins like these. Um, I don't, you just don't need them for what we're doing. All right, so now it looks like a little tiny pillowcase. Uh, you see that our folds on the outside are tucked in. Our edges are nice and clean. This is still open. And then long side. All right, so now it's time to iron in the folds of our mask, which helps it open and cover the whole face. So what you wanna do is whichever side of the fabric that you want to be your front, though this is a reversible mask, you're gonna to want to lay flat down. You're gonna have your iron nearby and ready, and you're going to fold your fabric up about an inch from the top. You're then gonna take your iron and press it down. It, as always, is super important you get this crease really hot and crisp because this is going to keep the shape of your mask over time. So now if I were to open it, which be careful by the way, because your fabric's gonna be hot, you can see how nice and crisp that fold is. So we bring it back over. So again, all I did was fold it up an inch, iron it down, then I open it and flip it over. I'm then going to pinch that crease I just made and fold it up about mm, almost an inch, not quite. And then I'm gonna press this down as well. Okay, we're getting there. Next, I'm going to pinch the middle part of what's left up here and create another pleat another fold, okay, just like that, press it down, watch your fingers, steam is hotter than even boiling water, so you will burn yourself if you've got your hand down there close to the action. All right, last but not least, we're gonna do one final pinch. So same idea, kind of pinch and bring up. Now 
Make sure to go back and forth several times with the steam. You want it to almost be able to hold its shape completely. All right, we're ready to move on. Okay, so now we have our ironed mask. I also flipped it over and ironed the backside. Some of my pleats were a little too tight, so I opened them up a little bit and ironed it back down. So feel free to kind of maneuver yours to be a little wider or narrower if you want. Either way, it'll expand the same amount on your face, but I just get particular. So what we need to do now is actually put in our elastic and close up this edge that's been open. So what we're gonna do is flip it over and you're gonna take your elastic and stick it in the very top corner about a quarter of an inch. You're then gonna bring it to the sewing machine, kind of pinching it in there, making sure it's still in there. Lower your presser foot and we're gonna end up sewing a straight stitch on top of all of our folds. So we're sewing it to hold our pleats together. So it's gonna be super important that you back stitch on top of your elastic. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna sew about halfway down. Pause. And then you're gonna take your other piece of elastic and slide it in about a quarter of an inch. I can feel it in there and keep going. Make sure to back stitch, and you can even go over it a couple times if you need to. And there you see, we have our elastic nice and securely attached, and our pleats are stuck in place. So now we'll just do it on the other side, and then we'll be finished. All right, so I just finished sewing the elastic into the edges of our fabric and our mask is complete. So just like the one I'm wearing, you can open up the accordion fold. Um, you always could do longer elastic, um, maybe nine inches, so that you then could add a bead to make it adjustable, but that's totally up to you. You also could have added interfacing as a inner layer to add more protection. Um, I like the comfort and feel of just the two layer, but to each their own. So I hope this was helpful. You enjoyed it. Should only take you about 10 minutes once you get going. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you wanna drop any questions or comments down below, you totally can. And uh, check out my other videos if you wanna learn some other projects. Bye.